Recall what we said at the start of our QoS conversation, which is that QoS can help us decide which packets to drop. So this is an important part of quality of service, and this can really help us out in a couple of different scenarios. So let's specifically talk about one. Let's say that we've got a service provider, and this service provider has said, you know, we're gonna deploy this router here, and we're gonna connect down to a customer router. Now we're gonna connect these routers at 100 megabits per second, but the customer doesn't want to pay for 100 megabit per second WAN circuit. You know, maybe this is gonna go off to you know, the customer's other location, the other site somewhere. And so instead, the customer wants to pay for 50 megabits per second of WAN circuit bandwidth. So this is interesting because anytime I draw a network diagram, I'm gonna show this WAN circuit connected in at 50 meg like this. But the reality is that we have to worry about the physical speed of the link. And the physical speed of the link is 100 megabits per second. So what happens if something down here, you know, let's say there's a host or a server, and it's pushing so much traffic to a device that's out here that it ends up creating 100 megabits per second of traffic. Well, by default, this device is gonna have no problem. It's just gonna forward 100 megabits per second across to the service provider, and then the service provider is going to do what it should do, and it's going to drop half of that traffic. So, this is an interesting situation. We have a defined policy, we refer to this as a service level agreement or an SLA of 50 megabits per second. We have a 100 megabit per second link and we have this problem where the service provider is dropping traffic. Now, at first glance, we might say, well, okay, that's, that's unfortunate we're sending that much traffic, but we're only paying for 50, so the service provider can drop all of that and they have the right to do so. Here's the problem with this. Is the service provider going to prioritize the packets that they're dropping? And the answer is going to be no. They're not going to look at a packet and decide whether it's a voice over IP packet versus a bulk data type of packet, maybe an internet download or something like that. Like maybe, maybe somebody's on a phone call here and they're trying to have a phone call with somebody that's on the other side. Is the service provider going to care whether it's a packet that belongs to the servers or a packet that belongs to the phone call? And the answer is no, they might well decide to drop the voice over IP packet and keep the bulk data uh, packet, which is no good. So ultimately, we do not want the service provider to drop the packet. So this is the first side of this conversation. And the solution to this is to use a technology that's within the QoS conversation that's known as traffic shaping. Traffic shaping basically says that we're going to buffer the traffic and smooth it out a little bit. The idea here is I'm bringing in 100 megabits per second and I'm going to funnel this down to 50 megabits per second. So 100 megabits per second coming into the device and we're going to send it out at 50 megabits per second to the service provider. So by the time this traffic is received by the service provider router, it's going to see 50 megabits per second, which means that there are no drops over here which is absolutely fantastic. That's what we want. We never want the service provider to drop a single packet because of this scenario here, they are not prioritizing things. Now, we might already be looking at that and saying, okay, well, that's living in a perfect world, but how do we get 100 meg down to 50 meg? Well, there are two main options. One is to, again, buffer things, you know, use, use the buffers of our queues and hopefully, you know, it, it bursts into 100 megabits per second. We can still get most of that traffic out. It'll just take twice as long. But the reality is that in most cases, we are going to have to drop traffic. But at least in this scenario, we get to choose which packets get dropped. And so I can take my voice over IP packets and send them through and drop the bulk data packets. So that's the idea here. It's not that I'm trying to prevent packet drops, although as I mentioned earlier on in the skill, we can, but if we have enough buffer space in our queues and the traffic isn't sustained at 100 megabits per second, we might be able to send most of that traffic. Again, at 50 megabits per second, it'll just take twice as long. And hopefully during that process, we're still prioritizing voice over IP packets. But in most cases, we are still going to have to drop a lot of that traffic. We just wanna make sure that it's us that's dropping it. Okay, so the other side of this conversation is now flip it around. Let's say now that we are the service provider. So the question is, how 
are we going to drop this pack or this this data as it comes in? And on the one hand, I could say, okay, well, I, that seems easy. I just have to drop half the half the traffic that's coming. But again, this is a 100 megabit per second connection, and maybe 50 meg is easy math. I just have to drop every other bit effectively. But packets are different sizes, first of all. So if I have different size packets, then how am I supposed to manage that and making sure that I'm only allowing about 50 megabits per second through? And then the other conversation too is what happens if the customer just happens to burst above 50 megabits per second? Uh, it seems pretty reasonable to allow them to transmit 51 megabits per second or 55 megabits per second for a very short amount of time. And so this solution is known as policing. Policing is basically doing what shaping's doing, but on the other side, and it's not doing it as nicely. <laughs> uh, policing is basically trying to drop traffic, and it's trying to drop traffic such that it averages out to the SLA, whatever that SLA is, while, by the way, allowing some amount of bursting. Now, how shaping and policing do all of this is actually fairly complex, well outside the scope of this conversation and well outside the scope of the exam. But here is one of the primary takeaways we should have from this conversation, which is where do we actually apply these two different policies? So as we're paying attention to this, hopefully we see that shaping is going to be what we call an egress policy. It's the policy that I apply as I send traffic out an interface. I want to shape that traffic down before I send it out to the service provider. Whereas policing, this is going to be an ingress policy. As I bring that traffic in from the customer, I'm going to apply my policing. So shaping is usually mapped to an ingress type of policy here and policing is mapped to an egress type of policy and situation. So at a high level, we need to make sure we understand what these concepts are, where they get applied, and what exactly they're trying to accomplish. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click here to subscribe to CBT Nuggets and click the notification bell to make sure that you're aware of every time we post new content. If you're interested in a career in IT or you wanna brush up on your IT skills, then swing over to our website and while you're there, be sure to sign up for a free trial.